Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. I am Nina Keegan and this is Michelle Humphreys and we're so happy Hi. you joined us today. Today we're going to talk, be talking about um, that God will use what the enemy is meant to harm you for good. There's Amen. a scripture that says that. He turns all yes. things around for the good, no matter what. Romans 8, 28. So it's a good, good scripture to, to kind of always know no matter what's going on in your life, you can all say, thanks. I don't know how God can use this for good, but he's going to. He is. We say that all the time. We, we do. And we, we focus, which is my favorite part of it, is all. God turns all things to, he works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And we are. Amen. Amen. So we are going to focus on that all. Look at Joseph. Look at the life of Joseph. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. I mean, first of all, you know, God gives him this great vision. Yes. He goes out and brags about it to his brothers. Bad idea. But, you know, he was young. They throw him in a pit. That's a bad, a bad thing, right? So pit. Then slaves come, he, they, uh, traders come in, slave traders, they buy him as a slave. Then he, he you know, rises up in the slavehood and, <laughs> and, and then he gets, he gets accused by Potiphar's wife, which he was falsely accused. He gets thrown into prison, rises up in the prison world, gets known for interpreting dreams, ends up saving his family during a famine, ends up saving uh, basically Israel, you know, during the famine, he becomes the, the you know, a, a leader in Egypt. Think about that. And he says to his brothers, instead of, you know, mm -hmm. completely getting them back for what they did, Joseph says what was intended for evil, God meant for good. Isn't that amazing after all of that? And he did not. It was a long time. It 14 was a years long or something. Time. And some of us are whining because we didn't get our you know, prayers answered last week. You well, know? Joseph knew, you know, the uh, prophecy on his life. And so imagine what he was thinking when he was in the pit and exactly. when he was in the, in the prison. And, and he had to keep thinking about that vision. Yes. Keep that vision ever before you, what God says. If God said it. He doesn't change his mind. It's not like he's like, oh, you know, let me rethink that. I, right. I, I don't know if I was like really thinking that day when I said that. No, he means it. When he says something, it shall happen. It will yes. be. Uh, even if it takes years and years, there's so many times in the Bible. But that's, you know, if you think about those stories in the Bible, they're all so that we can relate and so that we can see, you know, there was so many things that God had to work out and so many things that had to happen in the process of the waiting. And, right. um, but God will always use what the enemy has meant to harm you for your good. And I think about, and, and he will restore you through that too. And mm -hmm. so I think about David, and wow. he and his troops had gone out and they were, you know, had fought a battle and they return home and they find that their whole village right. was burned down, mm -hmm. that, that their, there was all their wives and children were missing, gone, plundered. And just imagine what that's like. You see all that, right? And yeah. you're, and it says what I, what I love about this, the Lord showed me so many things in this story that it, it, one of them is that they wept. It said they wept and wept through night and through day. So, you know, God got, there's a time and a place for that, for right. one, is that, you know, you can be, you know, you go through your time of weeping, your time of mourning, but then. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's what he said. He said, so it says, then David, he got up, he encouraged himself in the Lord and he decided, he asked the Lord and the Lord, he said, shall I go find everything and get everything back? And God said, yes. God said to go, but he didn't even know really where to go, where, which way the enemy had gone. So mm -hmm. as they start off on their journey and just think they're so tired, not only have they just come back from battle, then they're up weeping and crying yeah. all night Gnashing and they don't even teeth. really know yeah. where to go. And along the path they meet, um, th they see a guy that's just kind of tossed along the side and he's from the enemy's camp. Mm hmm and he's starving, they grab him, they feed him, they give him water and they start talking to him. And they said, do you know where, they're, where they've gone? And the guy says, yes, the guy says, yes. And he says that he'll show them where to go to get their things back if he does not, if they don't turn him back over mm -hmm. to the enemy. So what they end up, you know, going by what this man tells them, they go, they, they get everything back. Like a everything. country and Western song, but, back mass. But not yeah, only, they got it all back. Their not wives, only that though, but mm -hmm. every, those, that enemy had plundered other villages. 
So they didn't only just get back what they what they had lost from their own village, they got back everything else from the plundering of all the yes. other. So not only did they get back what they were what what the enemy stole from them, but more so, right. even more so, more than enough. But the interesting thing is God used what the enemy tossed aside to bring them mm -hmm. to their victory. The enemy Another reason to be good to your enemies, right? Yes, he threw that guy aside. The enemies mm -hmm. threw him out. They said, you, you know, he was sick. The Bible said he was sick. So they're like, he's no good to us. Right. But the enemy used that sickly man on the side of the road to show them where the enemy had gone mm -hmm. and for them to get everything back, to get fully restored, mm -hmm. fully restored. And it said that they had so much that they were able to sow it into other lands, into mm -hmm. other um, other kingdoms. That's amazing. That's how much they got back. Yes. And so, you know, that's the thing about God. He is you, the God. Sometimes of, you do have to go into the enemy's camp and get back what he stole from you. You know, like that old song. But he encouraged himself in the Lord and the Lord told him. Yes. The Lord told him. Yes. You yes, have to get along go. with God. Find out what God says about your situation and then move forward mm -hmm. with, with confidence. That's David didn't seem to lack confidence. But he had his time. He had his mm -hmm. time of mourning. He mm -hmm. had his time of, you know, it's a deep wept and mourning. But then he got up. Right. You don't stay in that place and you don't exactly. stay defeated and stay, look what the enemy has done. Now I, my whole life is ruined. How many people stay in that place? Right. This happened to me when I was a child. And now because of that, you know, this is why, and that's why, and this is how my life has turned out. So many people do that. Yeah. And if you're doing that, please stop because that you're, you're never going to move forward. You know, it's not going to be in, in 20 years, you're going to be saying the same thing. You need to decide today that you're not going to do that in order to move forward, right? Because life isn't fair because we live in the world. Right. And in the world, you will have trouble. Mm -hmm. I was saying, but you need to know um, what to do about that trouble, that we have authority and power in God and that we can, we can be overcomers through the word, the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and we can go get what the enemy has taken from right. us. Right, and, and you can decide to be a victim or a victor, mm -hmm. but you can be pitiful or powerful, or, but you can't be both. Mm -hmm. And when I, I can remember when one of my little girls said, this isn't fair, life's not fair. Mm -hmm. And I took her out to get an ice cream cone. I said, yes, you're right, it's not. Bad things happen to good people. These things happen. I'm just, we're gonna celebrate that you know that, mm -hmm. but don't ever become a victim of that. Mm -hmm. You cannot become a victim of life is not fair. Mm -hmm. Get up. And, and happen to life. Mm -hmm. Don't let life happen to you. Mm -hmm. Things are th things are going to happen, but it's how you deal with them. What attitude are you dealing with? Uh, you know, how do you handle your problems? If you come in as a victim, you're going to stay a victim. I see so much of that. I counsel yes. a lot of people, and oh, it, and seriously, the I know the ones that are going to get through, and I know the ones that are going to stay because. You have to come to that place where you lay down that victim mentality. And if you will not lay that down, you will be here when you die. You're still going to be saying the same thing. It gets old. You know, there comes mm -hmm. a point where you lay all of that down and you allow the Holy Spirit to heal those wounds. Forgive those people. God knows we all need mercy. So forgive mm -hmm. whoever it was that harmed you and begin to move forward in the great plan that God has for your life. And no matter what, like you think about some of the times in the Bible where where people just did not give in because they, you know, like for instance, Daniel, mm -hmm. okay, when it said that he should not, when the decree came out that he should, they should not pray to, any, you know, to God, that mm -hmm. was, you know, just the king was ordering this, this decree. Not only did he keep praying to God, but he had the windows open. He didn't even do it behind closed doors. Yeah. He didn't even pretend, well, you know, I'll just close off my house. He was not ashamed. And I'll pray in secret. And he did not. He says he opened the windows. He left the doors open. He did not care. He was, he was standing by what he, who his God was. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't afraid to back down. He wasn't afraid of the enemy no matter what. The, the punishment for that was to get thrown into the lion's den. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he gets thrown into the lion's den mm -hmm. because of that. But it says that when he prayed, it said the angels, the angels came and took care of him. But if you think about what the angel said, the angel said, when you prayed, I was dispatched 
Think about that. Think about, and we can do that same thing. You know, the Bible says that we can, that, that um, he doesn't want us to even have our foot dashed against a stone. That he sends in Psalms 91, that the angels are, are right. he sends them to us. And so the minute he prayed that the angels were dispatched and Daniel survived the lion's den, the, the lions did not eat him. The, the tomb, the, the lion's den was sealed. There was no way he could have gotten out. And so Amen. God took care of him because he didn't back down through fear. Right. He didn't, he did not say, you know, how many times do we back down or do we have this fear of man, especially nowadays in the world where Christians are getting persecuted. And, and, you know, if Bible says that if you deny God, that he will deny, deny you. you. And, and yeah, so, that was one of the scriptures actually yeah. that, that got me up off the pew whenever I was a little girl, I was afraid to go down to get saved. But that scripture mm -hmm. who, I don't even remember who said that. They said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father in heaven. And I was seven years old, but I got up out of that pew and walked down to the end. And I met Jesus that day. And that has constantly been, I, I honestly have tried not to ever be ashamed of the gospel mm. anywhere that I have been because what's the point? Yeah. You know, because, you know, I, I don't know if you guys like Big Daddy Weave. <laughs> I love Big Daddy Weave. He hears me. He, he must read my, my mail, you know, but he has that audience of one song. Mm. I love that song and because at the end of the day, we have, we serve an audience of one. Amen. Who cares what anybody thinks? Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. Yeah. You know, so why do we care what man thinks? And what can man do to me? What? Yeah. What can, what, there's a scripture that says that. What can mere man do to yes, me? Yes. Nothing. And you know, if you think about how fear of man is a snare, um, even when he tells you, I know different times he has told me, he's told you to go speak to somebody. You see some woman, I, I think I've shared before about this woman on an airplane. And uh, he, he kept showing me something about this woman and he was telling me to go speak to her. And of course I did and that, that I needed to pray for her and all that. But what we can do is a lot of times we, t we go, oh, they're going to think we're weird or they're going to think we're crazy or, you know, that's that whole fear of man. And a couple of things are in this, you know, he's asking you to obey. You will be blessed by also just being able to be used of God, right. you know, and that you've been part of someone's answer that they were asking and that the Lord has sent you to be, to pray for them or to speak yes. with them. And so, so many things are involved in that. Now, if you were to back down and had a fear of doing that, then you've not only, they've missed out on hearing from the Lord. God, mm -hmm. God doesn't need us. Right. He'll go find someone else that's going to be obedient mm -hmm. to go do that. But then you've also missed a blessing of being able to be used from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so anytime, you know, that he's calling you or he's showing you or he's asking you or telling you, say something, speak up. Because or just wait until something yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, with, I, I work with CBN and I, I uh, visit some, some of their partners. And one day I was at, I was going in to visit this lady. I had tried to call her and she just was not answering the phone. So I, I was going to let her know that I was coming. And so I waited at her gate for like 15 minutes. And I, I, I mean, I don't look very scary. I don't think, you know, so no one would let me in the gate. So not, I mean, this was a gated community, but no one would let me in. So I just sat there and I started thinking, you know, this is weird because I look like a normal person. I don't look like a girl from, you know, in the hood or anything like that. <laughs> so I, I was waiting for someone to let me in and I just began to think, Lord, you are going to get good out of it. Something good is about mm -hmm. to happen. I just feel it. Something good's about to happen. So I get to her house, which I had never been to, and there's another gate and I'm going, uh, now how's this gate going to open? You know, and sure enough, out she walks. And the Lord told me to give her a particular book, which I wouldn't normally give to someone that I didn't know. And it was like 200 answers to all these questions, you know. And I thought, ah, I don't know if she would agree with all those. So anyway, I um, hand her this book. It would, Actually, she comes out first. And she, she goes, do you have the package? And I said, well, yeah, I have a package. I don't know if I have the package. And she goes, who did you say you were again, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, she, so one of her neighbors happened to call her when I was at that gate and say that she had a package. Now she had never seen that neighbor. 
you know. So she, she, this little girl on a bike comes up with a package and then I hand her that book which, which that day she had said to the Lord, I need answers to all these questions and in that book were all those answers. Isn't that something? They were the questions and the answers. And, and here she was, she had told her mom that day, like the Lord is just going to drop down in here and give me all these answers. Isn't that something? You know, so seriously, God can work all things out for good. Yes. He really can. And he, he absolutely was there that day and gave her those answers. And that was the beginning of a beautiful walk with the Lord because she ended up getting saved and, you know, has just, just done great. So he does turn all things around. Like we don't even know, um, you know, why certain things happen. And a lot of times we're going, we're real puzzled by it. Like yes. what is going on? Yeah, what's this? blocking this? Why can't I get in the gate? Yeah, why, you know? but we always see, eventually we will see because, you know, God's, God's, it's just so amazing. God is so fun, is. we say, because when it you is. get to work it's for so the fun. Lord, you just get to see that you become part of God's plan for someone else's life. You know, just being able to show up and speak into someone's life or help somebody. Um, you know, just the, just the other night, Saturday night, um, I was having a, a birthday party for my son and a bunch of people were at my house and it got to be kind of late at night and this woman called me and she's a friend of mine, but not a super close friend. And it's mm -hmm. not anybody that I've talked to even recently, haven't talked to her in quite a while. And yet 930 at night on a weekend, mm -hmm. my phone is ringing and I have a bunch of company and, and I thought, you know, normally I probably would have let that go. Be mm -hmm. Oh, I'll call her later. But because of the time and right. because I hadn't really talked unusual. to her. It was unusual. But also I, something in the spirit told me I needed to answer that call. And I answered the call and she is panic stricken and she's crying and she's like, I need prayer. I need prayer right now. And she said something or no one was around. Her husband was gone and something had happened with her vision. So she wasn't even able to drive. And I instantly, thats it was like a, a minute. I, I go, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. I have a lot of powerful prayer people around me. So mm -hmm. we're going to pray out loud. That's good. And so we just started praying and the Lord showed me something. I kept hearing the word cauterize, cauterize. And I thought, that's so weird to say about vision, mm -hmm. isn't it? Because, but I, I thought, but I know that if he's saying it, and I don't know, that's not a word I would normally say, because mm -hmm. we talk about this a lot, because it's not anything that you would say about someone's eye. Right. And so I said, the Lord is cauterizing something in, in your eye just when we were praying. And then she stopped. She goes, you're right. You're right. And she kept saying, you're exactly right. And she said that she had had an issue ongoing mm -hmm. from about three years ago where blood vessels in her eyes start bleeding and it can be caught, it can be very serious. Right. And so I did not know that. I had no idea of knowing that. But the Lord knew that at that hour she needed that peace to know that he was settling that, that he was cauterizing right. that for her. Praise and God. so he gave me that word while we all prayed. And, um, but I sensed the, the fear and the panic she was still right. having because she was very, very scared. And so everyone left and she called me uh, again, late at, it's late now, everyone's right. left my house. And I, I knew that I needed to go over there. And so I went over there and she's a very powerful woman in the Lord and she does a lot of things for the Lord, but the enemy was lying to yeah. her. It doesn't matter how powerful you are. Yep. And it so got, the devil will come against And anyone. it was a divine appointment. We prayed it down. We prayed. I saw the spirit of fear gripping her mm -hmm. and just trying to drag her. And we just prayed it down and it lifted. And I'm telling you, it was so powerful What the enemy was again, using to harm her at the time God when no one was around. Good. It's this one time her husband's gone. All her kids are out of town. Everybody's gone. And you know, he was praying upon her. He brings this problem to her vision that hadn't been there for three years. You know, just think about. He comes up with the old stuff, yes, right? He to brings scare the old you. things. And yet God cauterized it. And then we were able to pray the spirit of fear off of her. Amen. And then fe uh, felt very powerfully that the Lord was going to use her mm -hmm. in helping people with fear. Praise because, God. And so, so God uses, once again, this what will not be wasted. For evil, God mm -hmm. turns around for good. So now she'll be used when someone's afraid, when mm -hmm. fear begins to grip someone else, and it will. Yes. She can be used to, to, for, you know, to pray against fear. But it's always interesting of what he does show you. It's like it was very, uh, it was not typical for me to have answered my phone on 
930 on a weekend night, especially when I have a bunch of company around. Right. You know, but something in my spirit told me I needed to answer that call. So we need I, to obey yeah, for God to use us. Yes, and uh, that we could all be together and when two or more gather and that, you know, we could, you know, out loud and boldly pray mm -hmm. and, uh, and that God would give her a word so specific to her situation to give her comfort and peace. Yes. And so, you know, we have, we all have, um, God wants to use you in whatever way that that one word yes. could give her relief. Yes. You know, and so we, we, we just amen God and know that the enemy, he roams, he roams around trying to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus came that we would have life and we would have it abundantly. And that's here and now. Amen. That's not when we die. We don't just have to live all messed up, screwed up, sad, decrepit, discouraged lives here. Right. And wait for the good stuff when we die. Mm -hmm. We're to have and enjoy our life and have it and, and to the full. And even if you're going through a hard time right now, you can still have joy. God, Amen. You, you, you know, what the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn around for good. So go ahead and enjoy your life. We give you permission. <laughs> you yes. know, not that you need it, but I'm just reminding you, God wants you to have a good life no matter what you're going through. You know, because he's stretching your faith. And I always say, you know, he's giving you your testimony with the test and the money, <laughs> you know. So he's going to turn it around for good. You, you have to believe that. He works it all Amen. together for good. All. I love Amen. the word all. Don't you? Because oh, that means everything. And when we, we laugh sometimes, we go, I don't know how he's going to use, no but idea. I'm this for good, but I'm excited to see because yes. he's said it, we believe it, and he promises things, and he does not lie. He does And not. so, you know. And he's so, faithful. He is. And when we're going through trials, he is showing us his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is. And, you know, the enemy, you know, he, he, he always uses the same old buttons, too. It's like he's, I always think about, like, He's, he's not even creative, you know, no, like it's, it's the same. It's common unto man. Mm -hmm. the it's trials. the same thing, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, whatever your button is, whether it's fear, whether it's your kids, whether it's it, fear of illness or whatever it is, he will try to lie to you with symptoms. He'll try to bring something, you know, with your kids. He'll try to, you know, it's, it's the same old thing. And so that's why, you know, you can, you, you can resist him at the onset and cast it down right. and say, you know what? I see this. I'm not falling for this thing again. This, is one more trip around the mountain and uh, this is this is not I'm not picking it up I'm, no. and it's like you you say I live under the blessing not the curse we, right this is covered under the blessing the and cross under the blood the blood under of the Jesus blood. the new covenant that we have with him amen and so because you know the Bible says count it all joy mm -hmm. all joy no matter what and when it says, you fall into these diverse trials and, yes. and we're all you know we don't know what your trial is but we can guarantee you're probably going through something, right? Yes. Are you going through something right always. now, Nina? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. me too. We're always going through something, and yet the Lord is always faithful. So if you just focus on the, the bad that you're going through, you won't even enjoy your life. And that's exactly what the enemy wants, because if the joy of the Lord is your strength, then... You're going to be miserable pretty much all the time if you're focused on what the enemy's doing. Focus on what God is doing and God will work out, work it all out for, for, the good. for your good and his glory. Well, well, the thing about going through something implies it's temporary anyway. Yes. You are never, God is never yeah, going to you know, leave you through. where he found you. He's never going to leave you where he found you. He meets you there and he takes you through it mm -hmm. and he takes you through it exceedingly abundantly better than you could ask or think. You learn what you need to learn in that trial so you don't repeat it. Yes. N know his faithfulness. Rely on that Amen. faithfulness. The next time you go through something, rely on that faithfulness. Say, this is what he did last time. I amen him. I believe him because he has never not Go been faithful. Go through your old faithful stories of what God did in your past. Write them down. Stand on it. Believe Thank on him. it. him. Get somebody who's going to come into an agreement with you because when two or more gather, this mountain shall become a level plain. It says that um, if, you, if you pray, if you pray boldly, if you pray according to his will, and if you pray like you know he's heard you, why would you pray if you didn't think he heard you? 
right? Yes. And says, then you shall have what you ask. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's, that's some pretty, you know, awesome stuff to stand on. Amen. I know he's heard me. This is according to his will. I know this is in the scripture. So yes. it is his will for us. And uh, we're going to believe him. Yes. Today, if you're going through something and you know that you, you're, you're comforted by the, the, the scripture that he works out what the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn around for good and he works out all things for your good and his glory. We want to pray with you today that you're going to get through those trials and, and, and you're going to look back and say, the Lord was with me through this and I got through it. And you're going to be saying to your friends and you're going to comfort those who with the same comfort that you're going to receive. We're going to pray right now that you receive that comfort. Father, we thank you that you are, are uh, blessing everyone who is listening right now, that you are touching their spirits. You are touching uh, them deep within their being, Lord. You're healing emotional problems. You're healing old hurts. You are causing people to have a, uh, an agape forgiveness, Amen. Lord, that you are delivering people from evil, Father. You are touching and healing people right now, Father. We believe that, Lord, that if there are people out there that are praying for their children, we agree with you that your child will be saved and set free in Jesus' name. We come into to agreement that, that God is working all of these trials and tribulations out for, for your good and his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we'd like to thank you so much for logging in today. Um, we invite you to just... Um, um, log on to our website, ninaandmichelle.com, and we'd ask you to just go in there. You can watch some of the programs. You yes. can read things. You can um, send us your emails. We'd like to hear comments, prayers uh, needed, anything. We're happy to pray with you. It's our privilege to pray with you. So just log on, and, um, and we'll see you next time here on yes. Nina and Michelle. God bless you. We God love bless. you.